Okay, now we're ready. Hello, people of the internet. It's Anna, and today I'm going to do the Intimidating TBR book tag. I think the last video I posted was my new bookshelf tour, so if you want to see that, maybe I'll annotate it here, maybe I'll link it below, maybe I'll do something. So yeah, let's just get started. Sorry, this mug is empty, it was just sitting on my shelf. I'm not actually drinking tea right now. <laughs> Bad for brand. I am particularly excited about this tag because my TBR is intimidating, and I haven't had a set TBR for a long time as it has not been posted on YouTube, and if I did, I would post it on YouTube. I do have a lot of unread books, but I've just been kind of picking up random ones that I feel like reading, and sometimes I finish them, sometimes I don't, but I think that's fine because, I mean, you shouldn't have to force yourself to read a book and you force yourself to enjoy something. Okay, number one, what book have you been unable to finish? Okay, so for this first question, I'm going to choose The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which is book one in the Mistborn trilogy. There's a period of time where this book got so much hype. I mean, it still does, but there's a time where, like, everyone was reading it. I definitely jumped on that bandwagon. I got, um, I got 200 pages in, and I had to set it down for some reason and work on like a product for school or something. But then by the time I got to got around to picking it back up, I'd already kind of forgotten about what had happened in the first in this in these first 200 pages. So I really want to just read it all the way through, but I just haven't had the chance to do that. So hopefully someday. Number 2, what book have you had What book have you yet to read because you just haven't had enough time? <sighs> So the book that I chose for this one is The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling or y'all know, y'all know about it. This is like an adult detective fiction novel. Vivian actually did read this book and she really enjoyed it and she was going to pick up what's is the next one, The Silkworm. Vivian has actually really been enjoying and getting into the darker adult fiction part of literature. But you know what? You gotta prioritize and right now Robert Galbraith is not a priority in my life. Sorry. Number three, what book have you yet to read because it's a sequel? sequel. One book that I have that I haven't read yet, and it's not because it's a sequel, it's just because by the time the second book came out, it had been so long since I had read the first book that I just didn't, I wasn't able to immediately pick it up, and I kind of wanted to do a reread of the first one. It's P.S. I Still Love You. I loved the first book so much. Well, it was really well written. I love Jenny Han's writing. I thought it was fun and clever. Um, but by the time I got the second book, like I said before, it had been too long since I read the first one, and it's not that I'm not interested in reading it, it's just because I just, ha I just haven't had the time to go back and reread the first one, just to read the second one. Wow, there seems to be a common pattern of me just not having time. Another book that I don't actually have but I haven't read yet just because I don't really- I find myself no longer interested in it. It's just been so long. It's the sequel to Mockingbird. It's Go Set, Go Tell, Do Set and Tell, The Watchman, Watch, Tell, The Setman, um, Tell, Set, Watch by Harper Lee. Number four, what book have you yet to read because it is new? And for this I'm choosing uh, Rick Riordan's Sword of Summer. That's the new one with Magnus Chase. Um, yeah, so I actually haven't read this book yet. It's not because I don't want to read it, and I know it's not as new anymore. It's kind of older now. I I can't find it in my heart to spend like 20 bucks on a hardback now that I'm a broke college student and I have other responsibilities and things I need to pay for. It's so hard for me to find it in me to shell out that much money on a book that might just sit on my shelf. Who knows? But luckily, um, I'm going to be going to the Scholastic Warehouse sale I talked a lot about in this video. Um, it's a really awesome thing that Scholastic does where you can go into the warehouse and you get to buy books for half off and stuff like that. Incredible, incredible, incredible. I'll leave information to it down below as well as a link to my video and the website. So definitely go check it out. That's how I can save money on books, honestly. Number five, maybe? What book have you yet to read? because you read a book by the same author and didn't enjoy it. Okay. So these two kind of go hand in hand because I haven't finished either of them for basically the same reason. So the first of these two books is Will Grayson, Will Grayson, which is by John Green and David Levithan. And no, 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 no. I do enjoy John Green's writing. It's David Levithan's that I do not. So I never actually finished this one, which leads into this next one. I wanted to try again with Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, and I figured out of the other ones, he did Nick and Nora and Naomi and Eli, um, this was the one that I was most interested in, but it fell short for me. Number six, 
What book have you yet to read just because you haven't been in the mood for it? This book that I chose for this is Let It Snow by John Green, Lauren Miracle, and Maureen Johnson. And this is a, as I am led to believe, this is like three short stories told during Christmas time and they weave together, I believe. Essentially, I just have never been in the mood to read this. I've never been in a situation where I'm like, wow, you know what book I all of a sudden really want to read? Let It Snow by John Green. That's just how it is. Number eight. What book have you yet to read because it's humongous? Have you seen these toilets? They're ginormous. No. Fun story, once in my elementary school we were learning about adjectives and some and my teacher was like, oh, name some synonyms for the word big. And I was like, ginormous. And she's like, that's not a real word, Anna. And I was sad. For this one I'm choosing Les Mis because that's a big book. I got this for five bucks at Barnes & Noble. It was during my Les Mis phase. This was when I was like, oh my goodness, I'm totally going to read Les Mis. But then like I got it and I was like, wow. Number nine, eight, oh, who knows. What book have you yet to read because it was a cover buy that turned out to have poor reviews? And I know exactly which one I'm choosing for this. It's A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. This cover is gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful book. Even like on the back, it's beautiful. And like, even I kind of want to keep it now just because, because and then, this is when I was easily susceptible to taking on the opinions of others. Reagan from Peru's project expressed her distaste. She thought she was going to love it. It was highly anticipated, but it turns out she ended up not really liking it as much as she thought she would. Also, Vivian had started reading this and she said that it just wasn't very good. And I trust both of their opinions. And I just never picked it up. Gosh, it is beautiful though, isn't it? Finally, what is the most intimidating book on your TBR? So when I think of an intimidating book, I normally think of a book that's like a really thick book, like just really big, you know, your, your Les Mises, your Cuckoo's Calling, your Mistborn. So a book that I'm intimidated by is The Stand by Stephen King. This is a book that I've heard a lot of really good things about, but it's just so incredibly long. Stephen King books are so intimidating, and I hate the mass market paperbacks where they're actually like this thick in the print, it's like this small and I love The Shining so much. It's actually on my favorite shelf right now. It looks very happy up there and I'm very happy to see it up there. But The Stand is a book that is huge. I think it's post-apocalyptic. I've heard such incredible things about it. Anyway, more Stephen King books. That's what I want to read, but they're all very intimidating because of their size and because of just the sheer quantity he has of books. Like when you go to Barnes & Noble, there's at least two Stephen King shelves, at least filled. Build Stephen King shows. What? So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. Psh.